I'm Scott Alamo, it's the 23rd of September 2022, and this is my vlog of daily life in Nicaragua, and today I am recording the show in Esteli. I'm actually in Leon today. I have very little that to tell you about my day in Leon. Basically, I worked all day. The evening, uh, we have staff that came into town, went out to dinner, had kind of a stressful dinner dealing with stuff that's going to end up being an entire stressful weekend because of the stuff going on tonight, unfortunately. So that kicked off a long weekend. But other than that, that was pretty much work. Finally got out, did a restaurant dinner at Sundance, brought food home for the kids, and are getting ready for uh, tomorrow. Going to be here in town doing a parade. So look for that tomorrow. Actually a procession. It's a religious procession. And um, then on Sunday, traveling to Esteli, hoping to do a bunch of recording like this once I'm there so that I can get some episodes recorded with some scenes of Esteli so you guys can see it. So yesterday I already recorded in Esteli. If you've seen that, you know that I'm safely here, obviously. And today I'm doing the recording. So you'll get a bit of Esteli footage as much as I can get done in the time, very little time I have allotted there. That is the plan. That is everything that happened today. And today's topic is I'm going to talk about the two Nicaraguas. It's really the three Nicaraguas, and we're going to start with the one that I wasn't going to talk about, the third one, and then we'll go to the two. But first, I'm going to spin the camera around, and I'm going to, oh, nice, beautiful breeze just came through. I'm carrying a backpack today. This is hot, even though it's nice and cool in Esteli. This is a hot one. All right, so I'm going to turn you around so you don't have to see me. I just want to show you more of Esteli as I walk. We're heading, hopefully going to get to the, the bus terminal pretty soon. Hopefully not going to run out of battery, and uh, we're going to talk about the three Nicaraguas. So let's go that way from under this tree, and then these trees. All right, here we go. So, when people talk about coming to Nicaragua, visiting Nicaragua, living in Nicaragua, there tends to be two Nicaraguas that they talk about, two very discrete, different places. Now I'm gonna start by heading over to the right side of the road, because there's something over there that looks interesting, so I wanna film over there, plus there's shade. That's a big bonus as well. This is a big thing, I wonder what this is. I may have to look this up on a map later and include this as like a title, or something, I don't know what this is, there's no signs, but clearly there's something here. Could be a ravine or something. No, there's dirt right there, I don't know. And then I'm gonna, over here, there's just definitely a bunch of stuff. It's like a park or picnic area or hospital or some kind of complex. The, a lot of water running here too. It's like muddy over there, I don't know. Very interesting. So when people talk about their time in Nicaragua, coming to Nicaragua, what they know, of Nicaragua really tends to be a couple really unique separate experiences. So first, the third Nicaragua. This is the Mosquito Coast, the two departmentos that exist, the autonomous regions that exist way out to the east. These regions traditionally were not part of Nicaragua. They don't have what we consider Nicaraguan culture. The people who live there are mosquitoes, not Nicaraguans. They tend to speak English. They were colonized by England. It is a very different region. That includes the Corn Islands and places like Bluefields and Lagoon de Perla. I don't know what this thing is, but it's pretty neat looking. It's got to be some kind of like factory or something. I'm going to guess that this is a cigar company. I don't know what else it could be. That is pretty cool. This is a region that, that does cigars, so that's completely plausible. Normally, I think they do them outside of the city. It's just more cost effective. This is really cool, whatever it is. An old established 1888. Absolutely beautiful. Glad we're walking along this. And a cool looking restaurant thing over here. Las Abuelitas, the little grandmothers. All right, about to sneak past here. All right, so. That's the third Nicaragua, and very few people talk about that because basically no one moves here and goes out to visit, or if they do, I did have someone recently comment on my show, wow, we went out to the Corn Islands. They were not hospitable, they don't like tourists. It was not at all what I was expecting from a Nicaragua experience. And I haven't been out there, but I would say that's probably valid. Not that they don't like tourists, I have no idea. Just saying that it's, that it's not the Nicaragua experience, it should not be. It is a Caribbean experience of which Nicaragua has no traditional Caribbean culture. There's, it's just different things. The third Nicaragua, really what you find is much less people going there and expats or foreigners or tourists really having a strong experience with it or identifying with it, but more seeing 
it involved in the rest of Nicaragua. You will see pockets of Caribbean or mosquito culture in different places and you'll often have a reaction of where is that from? And it's common because it's one of the main aspects of Nicaraguan culture. It's not the largest one, but it is the strongest secondary culture. And so you'll find pockets of it all over the country, of course, just as you find pockets of more traditional Pacific Nicaraguan culture hiding out on the Caribbean coast from time to time. Both move in both directions. Food moves one way, people will move as a family, go open a restaurant, then friends move. It's normal, right? You get little, little enclaves in both directions. That must be a really cool house back there behind that, but I can't really see it. This whole region's looking really nice, like a nice part of the city. Okay, so that's the Mosquito Coast, but the two Nicaraguas, this is what I really want to talk about because this is where, when you're talking to people who've been to Nicaragua or visiting or moving here, pretty much you end up living in one of these two places and your experiences are wildly, wildly different. Different in, to some degree, weather, different in your social circles, who you meet, who you hang out with. There might as well be two separate countries that exist nearly entirely apart from each other. Okay, this is a cool, this is a cool corner. This is a, is a, like a medical or psychology office thing. Gorgeous though. And then this pink house is, we walked past it on one of the other videos going a different direction, but how cool is that? And that's probably how we identify where we are. This bus goes to Acatal or Ocetal. Como se dice? Ocetal? Acatal? Ocotal. Ocatal. And that is the northernmost city of any size. That is on the Pan American Road as you head to uh, Tegucigalpa. So I've been there, but only been through it, not, uh, have not stopped. That will be a cool video. I really want to go up there and have more than just a Monday morning with the world falling apart at work to research it. Okay, so what are the two Nicaraguas? So one is traditional Nicaragua, the Nicaragua populated by Nicaraguans going about their normal lives. And this exists pretty much everywhere. Gorgeous house, really cool. And the other is the expat enclave Nicaragua, which mostly exists in pockets around the center of Granada, tiny pockets in Leon, in little sporadic bits here and there, and in a massive population in San Juan del Sur and its surrounding beaches. And it's large enough because of the countries nearby, like the US and Canada, that are, have such giant populations in comparison to tiny Nicaragua, that even though it is very unlikely that you will know someone from the United States who moves to Nicaragua as an American, once you live in Nicaragua, the chances are you will know many, many, many of them because we make up a noticeable percentage of the population and Canadians even more. Now, Canadians make up such a percentage of the population, you have a decent chance of knowing Canadians if you live in Canada who have come to Nicaragua just because it's a smaller country and so many more come, but the effect is the same. These northern countries tend to have people move in areas where other people move and not necessarily because they're looking for it, but because it's all that they can find. Traditional Nicaragua, as we have talked on many real estate discussions, is largely invisible to the outside world. If you want to look for a house, they're not online. You can't find any of the resources. You don't know what things should cost. There's no information. The expat world, however, knows how to reach, how to market to foreigners, to people who are not yet in the country or are just arriving in the country. And so they do so. So for someone coming to the country for their first time, or even after many times, it is very common to be in a situation where your only real access to information, ooh, you can see the mountain down there. That's pretty cool. Your only access to information is filtered through either expats themselves or services aimed at expats, but more likely the former. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's not necessarily something wrong, but it is a completely different view. And it typically shows a world that is very insular. So when you're part of that Nicaragua, the expat enclave Nicaragua, even though you may live out and about in a city like Leon, 
it's very easy. <laughs> it is very easy. That's the Cargo Trans driver. He wants to be on the show. <laughs> that is that is the main delivery. If you have stuff flown in from the United States and Canada uh, and delivered, that is the company behind the scenes that does all the delivery and storage and customs and all those things. <coughs> and uh, so there's a natural um, social circle that grows up almost everywhere that has a, a reasonable number of expats and everyone becomes part of the same Facebook groups, everyone knows each other, everyone sees the same channels, and again, not a bad thing, expats need each other, right? We have unique social situations, we have unique uh, food and travel needs, we need to share experiences with passports and visas and all sorts of important things, and so that makes it natural for us to want to connect to each other. And you definitely don't want to avoid them unless you're really in a really, really trying to get away situation. But it is so tempting and so easy to fall into an insular world, and it's hard to describe until you've lived here for a while, of just expats and people who are friends of expats and people in their circles. So you will have Nicaraguans that are associated, but have you will, you will potentially maintain very little, if any, connection to Nicaragua proper. And it's amazing because it really ends up being two totally different experiences. And of course, as someone in that circle, you can travel and do all kinds of neat things in the country and see things, but to some degree, you always end up feeling like a tourist, both to yourself and to others. Look at this dog just hiding. He's like, it's shade, it's nice. And, and we see this obviously a lot in Granada and San Juan, much less other places. But when talking to people who've come to Nicaragua, when people come and say, oh, we're gonna go down to San Juan and, and check out the country, the first thing that occurs to me is you're not getting any Nicaraguan experience by going to San Juan. It's not that it's a bad place. I like San Juan. It's got a lot going for it, but it's not Nicaragua. Technically, legally it's Nicaragua. So we, we screwed this up. We are definitely on a hill over the Pan American Highway looking at our bus terminal that we're supposed to be at. I got us straight to the bus terminal as far as walking to it, but we're on a hill. There's actually stairways right next to us. But this is the Esteli South bus terminal. And uh, now we got to go across the Pan American and these cute doggies. Hello, are you the official terminal greeting dogs? They are. Oh, please don't go down to the road. No, no. Oh. Oh, the stress. I'm going to go to these other stairs that don't have dogs and do have railing. I'm not exactly sure why we would use the stairs without railing. I'm going to use the stairs with railing. It's a personal choice, but for me, I like railings. I also like not dying, especially head first down stairs onto the Pan American. <laughs> All right, we're, oh, there's a crossing down here and a knowledgeable local who will try not to get us killed. Hola. Buenas tardes. All right, all right. Oh, ahora. That was easy. It always seems harder than it actually is. So this is the Esteli bus terminal. Now to find a bus going most likely just to San Isidro, but maybe we'll get lucky and find one going to Leon. These all say Matagalpa. I don't want Matagalpa. Well, no, Matagalpa might work because they'll stop at San Isidro on the way. That might be what I need. So not Managua, but Matagalpa. That's a cool, cool mural right there. So, so the whole San Juan Granada culture as it exists. And when I used to live in Granada, this it happened to a bit. I ended up in groups of expats who would have dinner together all the time. And it was like, wow, this is just who you meet because I don't speak Spanish. How do you meet people who are from Nicaragua? Now that we've lived here longer, we've started meeting more and more people who are actually Nicaraguan and ended up partially because we own a business here, partially because we live far away from the, the expat enclave areas. And it has made it that we are very much a part of a culture here. And it's a completely different thing. I need to go into the terminal. I'm gonna pick this up in a little bit. All right, we're in a different city and with a different hat and we're back in Leon because I had a lot to do. I had to get on that bus 
but that doesn't happen for a while yet. So you're gonna see the trip information in the future, one thing at a time. Right now we're talking about the two Nicaraguas and yes. So a lot of the experience that people get is in this kind of enclave world without it being an official enclave. Sometimes it is actual enclaves. It's developments that are set far away from normal Nicaraguan society physically off somewhere. The uh, Marina del Sol in um, uh, Marina Puesta del Sol in Chinandega is a perfect example. A beautiful resort set out on the ocean deep across the jungle. There are very, very, very few houses anywhere near it. No city anywhere near it. And when you go there, everything's fed by boats from Costa Rica. I'm sorry, from El Salvador. And it's a it's a world apart. Can you get there by, there by car? Is it technically inside Nicaragua? Yes. But does anything inside of it, from food to music to, to how the place operates, have any dependency on Nicaraguan life? No, not at all. You will, if you go there, you will experience the Nicaraguan weather and beaches and the scenery of the volcanoes in the background, but you will explore nothing of Nicaragua itself. And this is similar to an experience that a lot of travelers have going to uh, the, the um, Mayan Riviera in Mexico. A lot of Americans and a lot of others who go to Mexico go to Cancun, uh, to, to that area, to somewhere on the Mayan coast, and stay in resorts. And even though there are real Mexican cities with real Mexican culture and real Mexican food and real Mexican lifestyles, within minutes, they don't venture out to them. They don't interact with them. They stay in the resorts. And the, and the resorts themselves work very hard to keep people inside. And it's not entirely unlike going to Orlando and spending time in Disney World and discovering that not everything in Orlando is Disney and that there are people who live out there and eat at Denny's and uh, go dancing at night and it, it they have no Mickey Mouse involved anywhere. Right? If, if you go to Orlando as a tourist and end up in Disney World, you may have no idea that Orlando is a normal-ish city that has normal things and all the normal stuff that you would get. You have grocery stores. Who would have guessed you don't have grocery stores in Disney? Actually, it's not true. Disney does have grocery stores, but they're very limited. Um, but So the same thing happens here in Nicaragua. However, we don't have the giant tourist industry in the way that Mexico or Orlando do. And so because of that, it ends up being a slightly different approach and you don't necessarily see it as much. What you end up getting is this feeling of people who come here and never experience Nicaragua as, as we think of it as the country of Nicaragua. And, but they have this unified experience across rather a large area uh, simply because they're kind of kept apart everywhere. And if that's something you're looking for, you can certainly get it here and that can be a great aspect of Nicaragua. Panama has the same kind of thing. They actually have some pretty strong enclaves that speak English and have American foods and all kinds of things brought in. They're obviously much more expensive than living in normal Panama, but uh, they can be really interesting. But then there's the other Nicaragua, what I call the real Nicaragua, the primary Nicaragua, the Nicaragua that I live in. And that is Nicaragua of the Nicaraguans. These are the cities and places and activities that exist for people who are from here. And you get many fewer uh, expats and almost no tourists who end up really experiencing this stuff. You may see it out of a bus window. You may even take a walk somewhere near where, where people go. You may end up at a, at a bar or a club that doesn't completely only cater to expats, but chances are most hotels, most, most anything that you're going to find online, most anything you're going to book uh, remotely, most anything you're going to find as a tourist, and almost certainly anything you're going to find in a party hostel world, if you're in the backpack, it's backpacking circuit, it's even harder to get away from this, is going to be very enclavey, very at best seeing Nicaragua through a window. And, and when you get away from that, there is so much to explore and so much to experience. And, and when you get those experiences where people say, oh, Nicaragua is, is not as cheap as I thought it was going to be. No, trust me, it's cheaper than you ever thought it could be. But if you're stuck in the, it's a little bit windy, that's why I'm moving. If you're stuck in those enclavey second Nicaragua worlds, if you're going to the restaurants that are catering to the tourists, that are attracting you from near a hostel, that are pulling you in at the beach where everyone else goes, where the surfers are, you're not experiencing what Nicaraguans refer to as Nicaragua. You're referring to the resort Nicaragua. Even if it's not inside a resort, they're bringing you a little bit of the resort experience or a little bit of an enclave experience 
and it's great. And those of us who live here appreciate that those things exist because once in a while you want to step out. You're like, man, I've been here for six months. Sometimes I just want to go to the Hilton Princess and eat in an American restaurant and, and stay in an American hotel room. And we think it's funny because we do it about once a year. And when you stay in the Hilton Princess, if you didn't know you were in Nicaragua, you would have no idea. It looks exactly like a hotel room in the United States. There's no stylistic anything from Nicaragua. And uh, it lets you know the kids spend a moment and, and visualize that they're back in the U.S. and then step outside and there's a mall across the street. And the moment you go in and try to get food, it's Nicaraguan and you're back to Nicaragua. But a lot of these experiences, going to the market, eating at the restaurants that locals eat at, eating on the street at a Fratanga. Of course, you can do those things even if you're living in an enclave, you can go out and find that stuff. But there tends to be, on one side, it tends to be like a, I'm venturing out to go to a Fratanga, pray for me, right? And it's like this big, you know, we're taking a, a, a trip to experience for a moment Nicaragua, and then we're gonna run back to the safety of our enclave. And, and again, nothing wrong with that. If that's the thing you're looking for, that's fantastic that it's here. This is a great place to experience that. I don't want to discourage you. I don't want to make it it's easy because I don't do that to make it sound like that's somehow a negative. That is not at all what I mean. But this, this is a mentality. Like I'm going to venture out, grab something of Nicaragua, and then, and then go back to my safety um, or my comfort, whatever it is. And then there's the embracing it. And it's like, I talk to the people in the Fratanga easily 10 times a day. I mean that literally. They live across the street from me. I, I say good morning, I say good afternoon, I stop by and see what they have to eat, I send people there. Uh, I ask them what's going on with events, we have conversations, we buy things. Like it's just, you're, you're, you're living life on the streets. You're, you, you see me walking around, you see the places that I go. You see the people that run into me that know me. Um, I am not hiding in an enclave, I am not separating myself in any way from the country and so I'm getting more so but still if you if you spoke fluent Spanish if you were uh, easily accepted into the community not that I'm not accepted but you know what I mean like there's a oh he's nice it's nice to have him as a neighbor we're really confident he's not gonna stab anybody um, and then there's oh this guy he just you know we invite him over for, for parties and birthdays and and stuff and we have cake and whatever like there's there's a difference between really getting drawn in um, and and some of that is just speaking really really good Spanish, right? Because I do get invited by neighbors. Hey, come on in, right? Quite often people are like, come into my house, come hang out, come to a party. That does happen quite a bit, but it's, you're still kind of separated by the language barrier. And I say kind of, you're really separated by the language barrier, but there are times that I do that stuff and, and, and integrate very well. Um, and, and, and that becomes comfortable over time. But a lot of the things that I like doing best here as as someone who is trying to, to li really live in Nicaragua, I don't want to be in any way in an enclave. I want to be part of this country and exploring its culture and getting to know its people. And when I do things like go to Ciudad Sandino and hang out with friends from Managua and do purely non expat things. No expat has ever gone to the restaurants that we go to. None of them go dancing at the clubs that we go to. When we go and do any activities, it is all Nicaraguans completely, sometimes you know, middle class, sometimes poor, sometimes upper class, like we bounce around, but they're Nicaraguans and not expats. And um, if, you're, if you're doing activities here, and when you get there, there's any real number of other expats. There could be some, but if there's any number of them, you're in a tourist bubble, right? When I went to Antigua, uh, Guatemala, um, a few months ago, Antigua is a tourist bubble in Guatemala. And when I went to restaurants, we would look up and find some really cool looking restaurants and we would go there. And yes, there were some Guatemalans there, um, but there were far more expats. And it was clear, and we knew this, there was no, no surprise, that this was a tourist location and I was being a tourist. We were all being tourists and doing touristy things um, in the midst with a bunch of other tourists. And yes, some affluent Guatemalans would sometimes do touristy things because they wanted to try out that food or see that venue or whatever as well. Or maybe it was a date night and it's a way to show off as, as a more expensive restaurant or whatever. But it was clear we were not experiencing the Guatemala experience until we went to Guatemala City. And then when we went out in Guatemala City, even though we were going to equally as expensive restaurants, they were all Guatemalans and we were the only foreigners who were there. And it was a completely different feel. It was a completely different approach. Uh, and and you you feel that and in one case you're simply experiencing a nice restaurant that happens to be 
in Guatemala, and in the other case, you're experiencing Guatemala. And both are wonderful things, and both will happen here in Nicaragua. I can go to really nice restaurants here that are meant for expats. I can go stay at the Hilton Princess. It is a nice hotel, and, and it employs Nicaraguans, and I'm still helping the economy. Or I can go stay at a little local place that is owned locally, that only locals stay at, that may not even have a website, and experience completely what it's like for a Nicaraguan to stay in that city. And, and the experience is different. Um, and it, it's really hard to explain this feeling, but we all feel it. Everybody who's here, who spends time and knows, and you don't feel it from the Nicaraguans, you feel it from the expats, right? You'll meet expats that are very clearly part of expat communities. And you will meet expats who are very clearly part of the Nicaraguan communities. And the, the context that they have is so wildly different. Their impressions of the country are so wildly different. The response, you can tell from how people respond um, and, and the way that they see the country and what their experiences are. And it can be as simple as it's so cheap or it's really not that cheap, right? You can tell just from that statement who you're likely talking to and what they're surrounded by, right? And, and the one group will very often be like, I'm not going to go to a fancy restaurant. Why would I do that? Why would I come to Nicaragua and go experience fancy things? Because it's not really what they do here. Actually, they do quite a bit of that. There is a lot of Nicaraguan fancy. But that may be going to places like Dragonfly in Chenandega. You don't see expats there ever, but it's a really fancy place that, that expats would like. Now it's going to be swarmed as everyone from my channel goes to Dragonfly. Um, uh, but we're, we'll be like, oh, we're going to a Fritanga. Oh, a new little Asada opened up. I don't do that because I'm vegetarian, but lots of these places. Like, I see little places on the street. I take the bus, and I'm so excited about all the snacks on the bus, right? That's not the, the typical expat experience. The typical expat who's a little bit more enclavey is going to be, oh, we really like this fancy restaurant on the beach, and here's their, their beautiful menu and all this, you know, very westernized food. And that's great. And we love that those places are there, and if that's what you want to do, perfect. But be aware that is creating this huge gap in price, in, in culture, in impression of the country. Um, and, and so as someone watching my channel, right, what is the purpose of this discussion is when you're getting information, when you're getting feedback, when you're getting an impression of Nicaragua, um, it's really important to keep this context in mind. For those of you who are watching my channel, which is all of you, obviously, um, you, the uh, LCP, as I'm going to start calling you, my little camera people, the people who live inside my little GoPro, um, when you watch me, as you are right now, the context that you have is that of a person who has been here and been involved in Central America for seven years, who loves Nicaragua and chose it as his permanent location, who is investing here and putting in effort and really, really passionately wants to be part of Nicaragua, not in Nicaragua, but separate. I want to be integrated into Nicaraguan society as much as possible and participating in Nicaraguan things, not my own things that just happen to be in Nicaragua which is perfectly fine. That is a wonderful thing to also want to do. That happens everywhere. It is not unique to Nicaragua or some group of people or anything. Nicaragua is a wonderful country for both groups of people to live, and there's many people who walk the line between them and move back and forth. But it is important to understand that context. When I'm telling you what a restaurant is like, that is my context. When I'm telling you how much I like a town or a house or whatever, that is my context. That's important. And when you talk to a lot of other people who give you a very different impression of Nicaragua than I give you, yes, maybe they simply had a different experience, but very likely the majority of people who really have a different, different view of Nicaragua, the chances are the thing that is most different about them is that they are not attempting, not desiring, or possibly not understanding to integrate into Nicaraguan society. We'll assume that it's something intentional, that it's not what they want to do. And so they're giving you the, their impression of the enclave community within Nicaragua, which is very, very different. The approachability, the integration into a society uh, from, from here as a Nicaraguan participant is very different from that from an enclave participant. Um, how welcoming a group is, how impacted by uh, social events or economies, totally different things. And, and so when, when we're talking about any of those aspects, it's really important to keep that context in mind um, because a lot of people respond to my channel and say, oh, I didn't have an experience like this. 
And then they say things often that are like, well, that sounds like you were really, and it's not wrong, I'm not, not it's just why they feel that the things I'm saying are, are different than their experience. They seem to have a very much a, I flew into Managua, I got in my car, and I, and I shuttled off to my, my enclave location, San Juan, Granada, Ometepe, whatever, almost always to the south, and and it was it was more expensive than I thought. It was uh, hotter than I thought, or hotter than I wanted. It was um, just this experience that that was not like what I show. And then people who come and are like, I'm going to explore the country. I'm going to go stay in little towns. I'm going to really embrace that it's a different place and and give up my my personal context to try to take on the context of the place I'm in. Uh, I think tend to have the context that I have, or, or have the impression, the experience that I have in general. And um, understanding that it, it, it's twofold. One, one, you need to figure out what it is that you want. And that just because you don't want to integrate, if you want an enclave experience, it doesn't mean that you should not watch my channel and, and learn from me as well or, or watch my experiences because I give you more options and a view into what's just outside your, your enclave experience. Right, because you could be in an enclave in one of these buildings right here and just kind of your social enclave, right? Not a physical one. Um, or to say, oh my gosh, that's why all the information I'm finding on, on uh, television and when I talk to other people who've gone to Nicaragua and they're like, I spent $300,000 on a house. Everyone I know spent $300,000 on a house. That must be the correct price of a house. They're, that is a different experience in a different place. Those are not Nicaraguan houses, first of all, um, in most cases. But also, when you're in the enclave experience, there's a lot of circular information because it's a very small insular community, whereas the Nicaraguan community is very large. And so there's a lot of, well, I only have access to a handful of people. It's all the same people. And so there's a lot of information that passes in circles and you have to be a little bit cautious of how much, how, how much there's a, our entire world dictates this thing. And yet that entire world is just a few people. Um, it's, it's, it's a concept that's very hard to explain um, until you come here. And so I don't know how much of this is, you should be prepared for this. It's more of you need to, to hear what I'm saying, and then when you come to Nicaragua, um, come here and say, oh, I'm seeing it. There's this really clear insular expat community, and I can find it spread out all over the country. And then there's these people who are expats that aren't a part of a community, but sometimes know each other, and are, are really joining into Nicaraguan society or trying to be a part of the bigger country. And wow, the feeling of where they go to eat what they do for fun, who they hang out with, what their experience is, what their costs are, all of those things are wildly different and, and almost not tied together at all. And, and that starts, it'll start helping you understand the context. And one of the things that I think is, is worst is the, the enclave experience is so often what people say they don't want when you really ask them, but what people do, because that's where all the marketing comes from, is they will come to Nicaragua and say, well, I'm gonna start in some place like San Juan del Sur, which is incredibly insular, incredibly expat facing and very touristy. And, and the idea is it'll be like a soft introduction to the country. And one of the really important things is it is not an introduction to the country at all. It feels more like Costa Rica. It feels more like the United States. It is not culturally part of the country in any meaningful way. And your experiences there will easily lead you farther from understanding Nicaragua rather than closer. Um, there is no other spot in the country that feels and acts the way the San Juan does. And again, it doesn't make it bad. It makes it different and it's a very small place. And so this is important. If this is something you're interested in, if you're interested in the, in the beauty of Nicaragua as Nicaragua, not the beauty of what amazing architecture and, and enclave and food and stuff you can, you can gather and be in Nicaragua, but not participate in Nicaragua, um, then you need to come out to the place where these things are and see the festivals and meet the people and try the food and, and make a decision. And I, and I don't want to say you shouldn't then go to San Juan. You should. You should absolutely go to San Juan. But I think going to San Juan first is misleading and confusing and almost always where people tend to start, there and Granada. Granada is not nearly as, as bad as a starting point. Um, but even that, 
I would almost, if you're, if you're here as a tourist, you just want to come see for a week, absolutely, right? You don't want to be looking at society. You want to be in kind of the enclave touristy world because that you just want to get through your vacation and have a good time. You don't want to take the time to learn things, absolutely. But if you're coming here for the purpose of looking to live or possibly considering it as a location for residency or long-term stay or whatever, then you want to have a realistic picture. And I think you get that far, far better staying away from the expat communities until you have been here long enough, which could just be weeks, right? But get that feeling. What is Nicaragua like for you? How do you feel about it? And then when you go to San Juan, then when you go to Granada, you can have that context of, oh, I see how this is different than the rest of Nicaragua. And then you can make that decision in a good way. Oh, I like this better. I like this worse. I'm giving something up. I'm gaining something. And you can make those decisions. And, and keep in mind, I have lived in Granada. So I made the decision at one point that that's where I was going to be. I have looked and tried to buy in San Juan very seriously. I spent a bit of time there. Um, I came very close to choosing San Juan as a location to be. So in no way am I saying that these are bad locations or not places you want to choose. I would say that probably two thirds to three quarters of people who watch my channel will eventually end up at one of those two locations or a location very near them uh, because it probably is going to be right for a lot of you and it because it sounds negative when I say it this kind of enclavey thing but most expats over time are going to want an enclavey thing but not everyone so identifying that in yourself is a really important thing maybe you can do that when you're at home in the United States in Canada in the UK whatever you can say oh I I absolutely definitely want to be in an enclave or absolutely I don't I want to be in Nicaragua. That's why I'm going. I want to be a part of the Nicaraguan adventure. And if you, but if you can't, and a lot of people can't, then come here. But I highly suggest, one, understanding that there are these two parts. Two, evaluating anyone you, you talk to and, and internalize their impressions of the country based on which world they are in, which Nicaragua they are in, participating in. And then, based on what you know about yourself and what you know about those things, evaluate first Nicaragua and then the expat separate life within Nicaragua and see what makes sense for you. Everyone's different. Everyone has a different thing that they will fall in love with and want to be a part of. And you can live in places far afield. You can go to Hino, uh, Hinotega, live up in the mountains and be very reclusive and find expat communities and only hang out with them and, and kind of participate in that from afar to, to quite some degree. And you can also be in the middle of San Juan and decide to be very Nicaraguan and just stay apart from the enclave, but it gets harder, right? There, there is a natural affinity towards certain locations. I hope that's helpful. I think that context is really important um, because you get these wildly different views of Nicaragua and, um, and, and understanding them. For those of us who live here, we naturally are like, yeah, 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 that's the, that's the San Juan crew. They have you know, their own view of the universe and they have their own discussion groups. They have their own, when people talk about all the expats who talk to each other, that's, they're based out there. Out here in Leon, there is a lot of expats who talk to each other, but they don't talk to the people down there necessarily. It's, it's more just local communities and stuff. It's, it's, it's just a very different thing that you have to explore for yourself and decide what makes sense for you. That's my talk on Nicaragua. We're gonna take a millisecond break and we're gonna go talk about the day because we had some cool stuff happen today that I haven't had a chance to talk about yet. All right, so tonight for dinner, we went out to Sundance, but before that we got water delivered today and I just grabbed some quick video of that because you never see this everyday life in Nicaragua stuff. And so sometimes it just helps explain and visualize what life is like here. This is our water being our drinking water. Uh, so Sundance, great place for dinner because they have like steaks that Paul and Alan like to get and they've got vegetarian options and fish tacos. So I'm often getting fish tacos for the kids there. There and El Sisteo are the only two places that do fish tacos in town that I know of. So the kids like to get it from there. Um, so, so I got that and brought that home to them. Uh, this evening though, on our walk home, this is pretty cool. This weekend is the weekend of the patron saint of Leon. So there's a huge procession going on tomorrow. Watch tomorrow's video. That will be cool. Uh, tonight on the way home, we got to see all of the candles in the windows. So I did, I grabbed a little bit of footage of this for you. Uh, Cause as you walk down the streets, nearly every house has some candles lit in the windows and it's just beautiful. And it kind of gives a Christmas feel, right? With all these little twinkling lights all over the city. Uh, and so that was, it was really beautiful. And I got home and uh, dropped off the food for the kids 
and and I talked to them about the candle thing because it's like it's like waiting for the saint kind of thing, and they're like, oh, that's really cool. So I ran to the store, to the pulperia on the corner, and I was like, do you have candles? They're like, of course we have candles. So we bought candles and came home and we did our own little thing. We lit the candles and put them up in the doorway uh, so that we could participate with the rest of town, which was really cool. The kids had fun I and mean, it only took a few minutes. And if you watch my YouTube shorts, you will have seen I recorded some of it on there. I also recorded what happened to my hat while I'm wearing my fedora replacement hat right now. Um, but it was a cool evening with the kids uh, and a fun thing to do uh, and something very different. We don't normally get to do these participating in the local culture things so that's that was neat that was that was special and just a fun thing and we try to do that whenever possible like we did the corn fair in Matagalpa that was really cool the kids had a good time um, and it's I think it's important uh, to participate in these things because it gives them much more of a connection to the country and a little bit of feeling as to as to what's going on um, and it's a struggle to get them out to do things so anything we can do like this really works out well now the big big news that was the fun thing that was the cool thing the big news of our day is that this morning or i guess a little bit later around noon Walter and Lorenzo came over to try to clear out the drain because as you know we were flooding a couple days ago and we flooded again this afternoon not ter it didn't get quite as bad as it was the other day so we didn't uh, nothing got ruined but we're really close to some damage and it's gonna be flowing through the living room if we get any heavier of a rain and these are just afternoon rains so uh, if you haven't watched my videos about the rain go see there's some in the shorts and there's some in the full length um, but the one today so it flooded and then they came out and they tried to clear the drain while they were snaking out the drain they broke the main water line which also if you've watched my shorts all that's in there i try to keep you guys up to date the shorts if you're not watching the shorts go check them out they actually get more views than this stuff but obviously they're really short so you get a lot more time with me here but the shorts get watched more times does that make sense um so we had no water starting at about four o'clock i was literally getting out of my chair in my office heading over to take a shower to go to dinner and we lost all of our water and there's nothing they can do tonight so they have the guys scheduled to come at seven o'clock tomorrow morning to work on the water hopefully by noon ish we'll have water tomorrow so we are completely without water except for luckily we had water delivery today so we have, we have drinking water we have no shower water we have no toilet water and of course people will say as they did well you should have a tank for these reasons because a tank will hold you for days yes of course and we have a tank we have a giant tank they had to empty the tank as part of the draining operation, the drain cleaning operation. So the tank was completely bare and there was no water whatsoever. And, and the reason that the water got broken is because the water line actually came in through the drain. So the inside of the drain, while they're trying to clear it out, they ended up clearing out the water line and, and broke it. Uh, so what a mess. They're going to actually have to put in a new water line and rip up our living room tomorrow, uh, which is going to be quite an adventure. So this is the beginning of um, kind of a rough stretch of a week, uh, but you know, it's not a life or death thing. And we can't, so then the other obvious thing, why don't you go stay at the hotel, you own a hotel, right? Go stay there, that'll be fine. Yes, that'd be great, except it's full. Um, it's full of friends who have to stay there because their hotel is full, because it is a holiday weekend and everything is packed. So there's no hotels available in town and there's no hotels available on the beach and our place is already spoken for because friends are staying at our house. So yeah. There's no, and we have extra people staying at the house here. So we have the place on the beach is full. The house here is full. It is a problem. We have no water. If we absolutely have to, we could run out there, shower and come back. But my gosh, then it's just getting absurd. And uh, taxis back and forth are not that cheap. That may, may seem like, can't you just, no. If you're going in the middle of the day, you can take the bus, it takes 90 minutes each way. That's cheap, like almost free. But you want to take a taxi, it's about $12. You could load it with people and, and get it so it's not quite so bad, but it's still $12 each way. Uh, yeah, these things add up. And it's still an hour round trip, plus you got a shower there and everything else. That is the end of my day. These videos this week are really long. Thanks everyone for hanging in there. There's been a lot of information and a lot going on. Uh, there is tomorrow, I film here in Leon. It's Tomorrow's is already filmed. That one is done, so I know it's gonna be uploaded as soon as this one uploads. Uh, the day after that, uh, the video for Sunday, that is filmed in Esteli again. You've seen videos in Esteli, but we're not actually heading there until Sunday, but I had to film out of order because I wanted to get as much Esteli footage for you as reasonable. 
Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. Comments below. Ask your questions. Share this with your friends. Tell people about the show. Get some people. This is a great way to start your day. Have a coffee. Watch me ramble on for a while talking about things that no one else thinks about ever. And uh, check out my latest hat. I like. I mean, it's not. It's actually my second newest. My orange one's the newest. Uh, I got to get some new hats. So I need. I need more. Right. I'm a hat guy because I'm really bald and I live in a sunny country, which is hard to believe because it's so gray right now. I'm going to be doing a new LUT video coming up soon. My old ones were kind of popular. It took a while, and I did them before the, the before the channel was popular, and they still have like thousands of views. So I'm hoping that doing a new one, but this time it's with Motion VFX, not with uh, the LUT Bay. And um, that's about it. If you want to sponsor the channel, link below. It's buy me a coffee. You just click on that. You can give a few dollars, and it goes directly to me. That does a lot to help out with the channel. Um, but. No matter what, like, subscribe, tell your friends. It makes a difference. Thanks for joining me. I will see all of you from Leon with an awesome procession video tomorrow.